So when we say interest, it's usually in one of two contexts. Either you, you have money invested, you're getting interest from that, or you've borrowed money and you're paying interest to somebody. Especially if you bought like a, a large item like a car. Have you guys ever bought a car before? If you've bought a car before, you might have had to finance it. And so you go to the dealership and you put money down. And they say, okay, you're going to have to finance the rest. We're going to charge you money to borrow money from us. That's what interest does. It's, it's their way of loaning you money and making a profit from that. So we're going to talk about how to calculate two different types of interest today. The first type of interest is the type of interest you'd get from like a friend or, or, or like a relative. It's called simple interest. It's basically just saying, okay, I'm going to charge you a certain percentage over a certain amount of time for borrowing this money. So with simple interest, the formula is it's actually quite simple. It's why it's called simple interest. There's nothing really advanced about it. What it says is if, if you want to find simple interest, we'll call it I. The interest for a certain loan or for a certain investment is going to be P times R times T. Now, of course, we've got to know what those, those letters mean. So we'll start over here. And I'll give you what all the letters mean. First one is, is interest. The first one's I. That letter I stands for interest. It's the amount of money that you would get from an investment or the amount of money that you're going to owe on top of your loan. So I stands for the interest that's accrued. That P is a weird one. It, it's called principal. Have you ever heard of principal before? I'm not talking about like the guy in high school who you get busted, you go to the principal's office. Not that kind of principal, okay? Principal in this case talks about, does anybody know what principal means? That's the amount. So when we're talking about money, the principal would be like the amount of money you take out from a loan or the amount of money you initially put in the bank before any interest happens. R, when we see R, it usually stands for a rate, the interest rate, and that's what it is in this case. And T is your time in years. So how many years are you going to have this money in the bank, or how many years are you going to have this money? Let's see if we can do a few examples of simple interest. Again, this is the type of interest you'd get probably from, from an individual. Uh, they, they're not going to do compound interest. They're going to say, look, uh, how much, well, first let's do an example. How much money do you want to borrow from me? A thousand dollars. Let's make it a little bit more exciting than that. Fifteen. Thirty. I don't have much money. Seven grand. Okay, Se let's do seventy-two hundred. Just make the numbers more fun. You borrow seven thousand two hundred dollars from me, and I say, "All right, if you uh, if you want to borrow that much money, I'm going to charge you seven percent." We'll say at a rate of seven percent. How long do you want to pay the money off? How many years? Two years. Four years? We'll say four years. Twenty years? <laughs> we'll let you have that money for twenty years. <laughs> My goodness. I want forever. I'll never have to pay you back. You borrow seven seventy two hundred dollars at a rate of seven percent. I want to, you to find out how much interest you're gonna be charged after what would you say four years? Four years. Why does T equal years? Time. Find interest after four years. The first thing you need to do is identify what letters mean what and which numbers rep are rep <coughs> excuse me, represented by those letters. 
Firstly, <clears throat> we're looking for the interest. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what the principal is? 72. So I'm looking for I. The principal is 7,200. That's very good. And we're going to be multiplying by, again, the rate and the time. Can you tell me what the rate is in this case? 7. So am I going to put 7.7 7 or 0. 0.07? 0. Good. I'm going to put it in parentheses just to make sure I know that that dot means a decimal, not a multiplication. This means multiplied by 0. 0.07. And lastly, we're going to multiply also by the time in years. So T is time in years. It is how much? So it's a multiplication problem. You're probably going to need your calculator because we're dealing with decimals here. So on your calculator, you can do this straight across here. Say so you do it with, without rounding. Now listen. Listen carefully. If you're going to be a banker or someone dealing with money, you probably want to be pretty accurate with it, with it, right? Do you want to be off by a couple bucks if you're going to work for a bank? No. You're, you're going to get fired so quick it's not even funny. If you're off by a penny, they will fire you. Uh, you cannot be off at all if you're going to be making loans or taking people's money. So when you're doing these interest problems, you need to do it exactly like I tell you in the calculator and do not round it. If you round it, you will be wrong. If you're off by a penny, you get fired. In, that, in this class, it just means you miss a problem. Okay, so you're gonna miss a problem if you're off by a penny. Uh, I want them exact, because this is talking about money and people get real serious. Have you ever noticed how people get real serious when they're talking about money? You short someone a couple bucks, they're gonna get hissed. Uh, so we're gonna be to the penny accurate. Here's how you do it. Punch in your 7,200. Press times, press .07, press enter, then press times, four, enter, and it will give you a certain amount of money. You're going to round it to the pennies. Don't round to the dollars, round to the pennies. How much interest are you owed? 2016. That was the dollars. Yeah, 2016. Any pennies? No. So it's even? Yeah. yeah. So we'll put .00. So here's, here's the loan. Here's the loan you just took from me. I gave you $7,200. How much are you going to have to pay back to me? About $9,216. Where are you getting the 9000 from? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So this right here, this is the, the cost of you borrowing money from me. I say if you borrow $7,200 from me, in four years, not only are you going to have to pay back the $7,200, you're also going to have to give me this on top of it. That's the cost for not having that, your, your own money, having to borrow from me. Because I need to make something for not having that money. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. So this is the interest. The total charge to you at the end of four years, if you paid nothing to me that whole four years, the total amount due would be the $7,200 plus the $2,016. dollars $9,216. Would you take that loan? Depends on, it. Depends on if you need the money or not, right? If it's important enough for you to have it now rather than wait to make it on your own. It just depends. Yeah, yeah. The collection agencies work uh, on the the premise that the person can't get the money for themselves, yeah. and so they're just going to get whatever you can give them. Basically, it's not going to be near the the loan that you're actually due, but at least the company's doing something. And, and if you get collected upon, your credit goes down, so no one's ever going to loan you money, mm -hmm. at least for seven years. And then the collection agency gets a they get a percentage of what percentage. they get from you. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay, uh, do do one on your own here. Let's say that. Uh, I need to borrow twenty thousand dollars. At twelve percent interest for two years. Find a couple things out for me. Find how much interest I'm going to owe and find out my total charge at the end of those two years if I don't pay anything until my time is up.
you borrow 20 grand at 12% for two years, you gotta just have that formula down and make sure you can plug the correct numbers into it. So we're looking for the interest. Can you all tell me what is my principal here? 20,000. Good, all right, that's how much I'm borrowing or putting in the bank if you're investing. Now we also need to calculate the interest rate. What's the interest rate? 1.2. So we got a 12%, translate that to a decimal. And then the number of years is, is at T. How much do we have? Two. So we do our 20,000 times 0 0.12 times 2. And how much are you going to? 4,800. 4,800? Yes. Now that's how much interest you have. The total amount due would be if you add those together. That's how much you'd owe at the end of two years if you didn't pay anything to the person and they were calculating simple interest. Now, one other thing we can talk about, what if you don't have it for a certain number of years? You see, a, a lot of people have credit cards. You pay it off by the month, don't you? you? You don't usually wait for the whole year or several years to pay off that, that credit card. Well, so let's say you bought something for 1500 bucks, and your credit card for some reason is using simple interest instead of compound interest. We'll talk about compound interest in just a bit. It's more realistic. But let's say, just for the sake of argument, that they're talking about simple interest. They say, okay, we're just going to charge a straight up 20% interest for nine months on your $1,500 purchase. Let's see if we can do this. What's your principal? 1500 What's your rate? 100%. Principal is the amount of money you're borrowing or the amount of money that you put in a bank. 20%. It's the starting amount of money. How much? 20%. 20%. So I put 20 or 0 0.2? 0 0.2. Now here's the key deal. I need you all to pay attention on the board here real quick. Do I put 9 there? No. no. See, a lot of people do. A lot of people make that mistake. Because you see the number 9, right? Nine's a time. Does nine stand for months or years? Months. months. If I put this, that stands for nine years. You have a whole lot more interest than what you yeah. want to pay. That's the way someone does that. So this, we want to represent that as months. Here's the idea. How many months are we dealing with? Twelve. Nine, 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 nine months. Twelve. How many months are there in a year? Twelve. Twelve. So what we actually have, listen carefully, you don't have nine years, you have nine twelfths. Twelve of a year. There's nine months out of 12 possible months, nine twelfths of a year. Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. So nine twelfths as a decimal, will your calculator do it? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So do nine twelfths, it's going to be 0. 0.75. You have 0. 0.75. Did you get 0. 0.75 in your calculator? So nine divided by 12, you get 0. 0.75 or you get three fourths, something like that. Were you able to get that in your calculator? Yeah. yeah. Then multiply by 0 0.20. Then multiply by 1500. You see, it doesn't matter the order in which you multiply as long as you don't round the numbers. Two. Just can't round it. Two. 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 Two by adding that together. You're going to owe $1,725. You ready to try one on your own? Now that, let's do this. Let's say <laughs> your, your buddy comes to you and goes, hey, I got a great deal. I'm going to give you 10% uh, interest over eight months. You just got to put in some money. I'll give you some money back for it. So it's a quick, it's a quick investment. Eight, only eight months. So you go. All right, I got thirty-four grand. So I want you to invest thirty-four thousand dollars with this guy for eight months at ten percent interest. Thirty-four thousand for eight months at ten percent interest. 
Why don't you see how much money you're going to make? By the way, you don't have to memorize the formulas for simple interest and compound interest, which we're going to talk about in a second. I'll give them to you on the board uh, during your test. You don't have to memorize them. You probably will memorize that one just because you'll be working with it a lot. Maybe even the next one, but you don't, you're not required to. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what is your principle in this particular case? <laughs> what is your interest rate? 10%. So you're going to put what down on your paper? Now your time, you, you can't put the 8. You've got to do 8 over 12 because you're talking about months. So you're talking about really 8 twelfths of a month or 2 thirds, 0.6666666. Right? But don't round that. If you round it, you might be off by pennies. So here's how to do this. 8 twelfths. Here's how to do this without rounding. What you do is you punch in this number first, 8 twelfths first. Then you work your way backwards. So do 8 divided by 12, press enter. Then multiply by 0 0.1, press enter. And then multiply by 34,000, press enter. That will make it so that you don't round it all until the very last step. Did you get it? Yeah. What do you get? You guys sound like robots. <laughs> two, two, six, six, point six, 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 seven. That was funny. Wait, two, five, six, 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 point six, six, seven. Five, six, six, six. Okay, so we're rounding to the pennies, because we're talking about pennies here. Would you do the investment? If you had $34,000 and someone came to you and said, give me your money for eight months, you got to trust me. But if you give me your money for eight months, I'll give you back your thirty-four thousand, and on top of that, two thousand two hundred sixty-six bucks. Depends on the friend. Depends on the friend for me too. <laughs> but if it's someone I trust, yeah, probably, because they give me back some money. I'd make two grand in six months it's more than for doing nothing. Bank. It's not bad. Oh, no. wait. You get a uh, you get about point one percent, point one percent of the bank right now. Not even ten percent. Not even one percent. You get like point one percent. So really you round it though, like round to the pennies. At the end. At the very end. You cannot round at any step before that because you might be off on your pennies. Right? You cannot, that's why I told you to do it this way. If you do this and you go, oh, that's about 0.7, and then you, you do, it, it's going to be off. You, you're going to be off there. So you, you cannot round until the very, very last step with the money. Do you understand? Okay. Now, this actually is not very realistic, this simple interest. It, it, it's realistic if you got money from a friend or from, from an individual. But like the credit card example, do you guys have credit cards? If you have a credit card, you know that if you don't pay your balance, you get charged interest every month, don't you? So if you have like $1,000 on your credit card, you get charged interest, now it's like $1,020, right? If you didn't buy anything else. Still. And then the next month, if you don't pay it still, you'll get charged interest on $1,020, won't you? You're like $1,041 or something like that. Then the next month, if you don't get don't pay that off, you're getting charged interest on $1,041. Do you see how you're now getting charged interest on the interest that you just accrued. Do you see what I'm talking about? Same thing works with the bank. If you have money in a bank, we'll just make a simple example. If you have 10 grand in the bank and you're getting 1% interest or something like that, or, 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 or whatever interest rate you're getting, at the end of the month you're going to have like $10,001. You with me? The next month you'll get interest on $10,001. It'll give you a little bit more. And that keeps on adding and adding. That's called compound. Compound interest. Where interest is getting tacked on to interest. We're going to talk about compound interest now. This is a more realistic example. This is how you calculate interest for buying a car, interest for having money in a bank, interest for pretty much everything that, that we do in real life besides borrowing from friends. Hope you're finding this useful because at some point you are going to have interest in your life somewhere. <laughs> you, you already have it if you have a bank account.
So again, compound interest means you're adding interest per, uh, periodically throughout a course of time. It means interest on interest. The formula is slightly different. Here's the formula. This formula is different because it will give you the total amount due, not just the interest. Notice on the last one how you had to add the interest to your amount that you borrowed from or the, the amount that you had in the bank. This one you don't have to do that. It will give you the whole amount uh, before, or so completely within the formula. So you don't have to add anything at the end. It's kind of nice. Here's how it works. What was your P again? Principal. What's R again? Rate. What's T? Time and years, that's right. The new one is N. A stands for the amount, the amount that you're, you're going to have in the bank or the amount that you're going to owe, depending on whether you're borrowing or investing money. P still stands for the principal. R still stands for the rate. T is still the number of years. Here's what N is. N's the key to this. Y'all were real good at finding principal, right? And the rate, it's pretty easy, it's the percentage. T is the years, no problem. N's where people have a hard time. N is the number of compounds per year. The number of compounds per year. Here's the, that means in English. It means the amount of times you're getting interest tacked on per year. Number of compounds per year. For interest, if what now? Number. Number. Number of compounds per year. So let's say I'm a bank, and you come to me, you go, okay, I need to borrow money. And I say, I compound interest semi-annually. How many times is semi-annually to you? Twice. Semi-annually means twice. So that means your N would be two. You get interest tacked on twice a year. Do you get it? Annually would be one. What would quarterly be, do you think, for? What would monthly be? Twelve. Why 12? How many months are in a year? 12. Okay. Somebody else, someone on this side. How about weekly? <coughs> weekly? How many weeks are in a year? So that you get interest 52. There's 52 weeks in a year. Right? I hope so. There's not just four weeks in a year because otherwise our semester would be like four years long. That would suck. No, there's 52 weeks in a year. What if it was daily? How many days are there in a year? 365 days in a year. So you would get interest every single day. That would be 365 times. Are you clear on this? So you need to write this down or have it memorized. Both, actually, because I'm not going to give it to you on the board. Here's the different number of compounds. If you get something annually, Christmas comes annually. That means you get it one time a year. Semi-annually means you get something twice a year. Quarterly, same thing like with a dollar. How many quarters are in a dollar? Then there's four quarters in a year. That would be four. Four times a year. Monthly means you'd get interest tacked on every single month. There are 12 months in a year, so your end would be 12. Weekly means every week. Get interest every single week. There's 52 weeks in a year. Daily, the last one we'll talk about in this class. 
there's 365 days in a year. So if you had daily compound interest, that means every single day you're getting a little interest tacked on. They add a little more. They add a little more. 365 times for the whole year. There's also another one which uses a different formula, which we're not going to talk about. It's called continuously compounded interest. That means that every moment of every second of every minute of every hour of every day of every week of every month of every year, you're getting interest tacked on to what you owe or to what you have in the bank. Continuously compounded every single moment. You're getting a little bit more interest. Would you like to see an example of how this works in real life? you do an example? Okay, how much, uh, how much money do you want to spend on a car? 25, okay, I like it. So you buy a car for 32,000, you put 7,000 down, you're gonna get $25,000 finance. You better know how to do this because your, your finance guys might take advantage of you, give you a different interest rate or calculate this incorrectly and you're gonna be in a world of hurt. Uh, usually, interest rates are actually pretty low right now, but typically a, a decent car rate is about five and a quarter percent if you have decent, okay credit. If you have great credit, you can get down like three percent. There's 0.9 percent financing if you have outstanding credit right now at BMW. Uh, but let's just say, just <laughs> because I love BMW, yeah, oh, can't afford it, but want it. So you buy a car for $25,000 and they say your interest rate is going to be 5.25 percent. And they say it's compounded monthly. For a period of five years. <coughs> what I want to know is this. Let's say you have what's called a, a balloon payment with no, no payments ahead of time. So unlike a, a normal car company who makes you pay every single month, by the way, it, when that happens to you, when, when you pay monthly for your car, they, they take the amount of principal you paid, the amount of interest you paid, and they, they recalculate it every single month. Uh, you have a, a different, slightly different proportion that's going to the principal and to the interest. Right? That, that's how mortgages work as well. We're going to do things a little bit simplified. We're going to say, just how much overall money would you have to spend for this if you made no payments to the very end? So you go in today, you buy your car. They say you're getting charged this much interest, compounded monthly for five years. Just do this. At the end of five years, come in and pay us all the money. Okay, that's, that's what we're doing here. We're not going to be paying by the month. So you buy a car for 25 grand, 5.25% compounded monthly for a period of five years. We need to identify every one of these letters. So A is what we're looking to find. Can you tell me what your P is? What's your principal here? Good. The one never changes, and the plus never changes. Now inside of there, you get a fraction. On the top of your fraction is your interest rate. What's your interest rate? 5.25. So you need to calculate that, though, as a decimal. Are you going to put 5.25 up here? No. 0. 0.05. 0. 0.052. Oh, that's important. You better know how to do that. 0. 0.0525. Are you guys okay with the 0.0525? Yes. You sure? Yes. Okay. If you put 5.25, that's 525% interest. You, no one's going to pay 525%. That's ridiculous. All right. So the point zero five two five that means five and a quarter percent interest. Now the the other important one is the number of compounds. If you read through the problem carefully, it'll, it'll tell you in there somewhere how much compounds you have. What's the key word here for compounds? Monthly. 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 What's your n? Twelve. Your n is twelve. <coughs> you don't have to do any calculation. It'll do it for you. You just got to figure out monthly 12. So our n is the number of compounds, look at that, per year. So if it's monthly, that's how many compounds per year. You don't have to put 60, you don't have to do the calculation and figure out you're getting 60 total compounds. It doesn't matter, this will do that for you. 12 right there. Also, you'll notice this, look at the, the formula. 12 goes in two spots here, do you guys see it? As the exponent, it also is 12 times the number of years that you have, that's where those compounds get multiplied, okay? 
what's the number of years that you got? Okay. I need you to be real, real comfortable with that formula. Are you okay that 25,000 goes there? 0 0.0525? How about the 12? And then times 5. You all clear on, on where that's coming from, yeah? Here's how you calculate this. If you don't do it this way, you're probably going to have to round. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do this on your calculator. So take your calculators out. The first thing you do, the first thing you do is you do this exponent, and that's the only number you'll have to write down. After that, everything's done in one step. So do 12 times 5, and write it off to the side, or memorize it. That's going to be 60. So you memorize 60. Now clear your calculator. Follow me exactly what I'm going to tell you to do right now. You're going to work from the inside out, and here's what you're going to do. Start with 0 0.0525. You see where that's coming from in the formula, yeah? yeah? Remember, follow me exactly. Put 0 0.0525, press divided by 12, and press equals. Now leave it alone. You got that? Now add 1. Press equals. You should have something like 1.004375. Do you all have that? Yes. Yeah. Now, you have to do to the exponent. So take to the 60th power. The to the button looks like this, or looks like this, or looks like this. It's one of those on your calculator. It's either a caret or x to the y. X2. 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 No, not square. You're not squaring it. Y or y to the x. Y to the x. Or this. It's one of those four. Okay. Can you press that after? You still have this on your screen, right? Yeah. Now press one of these buttons. Now press 60. And now press enter and leave it. Do you have something up there? Yeah. Should be one point something. One point two nine nine four. Good. Now with that on the calculator, press times twenty five thousand. Press enter and then leave it. How much did you get? Thirty three thousand two hundred. Thirty two thousand four hundred eighty five and eighty one cents. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. You got this? Yeah. Yeah. Point what? Eight zero. No. Eight one. Eight zero six. Okay, you have to round appropriately. So if you have point eight zero six, that means you're gonna have eighty one cents. Eighty one. Eighty one. How many people would get that if you had a calculator? Good. You're now able to calculate compound interest in one step. So here's what this says to you. If you went and bought your car for $25,000, made no payments whatsoever for five years, neglecting any, you wouldn't have late fees if they give you this deal, you'd owe them $32,485.81 at the end of those five years if it's compounded monthly. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with this so far? Good. Now I want you to do one more experiment with me. A lot of people think that monthly interest and daily interest are, are very different. What I'd like you to do is change this problem just slightly. Let's say that the car company said, okay, no longer is it compounded monthly, it's now compounded daily. We're doing the same problem, just different. That's, the, that's what I'm having you do right here. Let's, let's look at that together. Is this going to change, folks? No. no. Is this going to change? No. Is this five going to change? Yeah. No. The five? Yes. No. no. Is the 12 going to change? Yes. 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 What's the 12 going to become? 365. Notice how if you change it in one spot, you've got to change it in two spots. Are you with me on that? Yes. Now, what I'd like you to do is go through on your own and calculate that. So the whole idea here is being able to identify the principal, the interest rate, the number of years, and especially, most importantly, the number of compounds. If you follow this little chart, that'll tell you the number of compounds. You can use that for any problem that you're, that you're working on.
So again, what you would do is do 365 times 5, that's the number you write down. Then you do the point zero five two five divided by 365, in this case, press enter. Add 1, press enter. Then take it to the whatever this power is, you've already written that down, press enter, then multiply by 25,000, you'll have your answer. It should be 32,000 something. Is it 32,503? Sounds about right. One. Okay, I'll, I'll walk you through it one more time. Uh, this is the last time I'll, I'll show you how to do this on your calculator. Other than that, you can see me after class or come to office hours to do that. First thing you do is you do 365 times 5 and write that number down. So tell me what that is. 1825. 1825. Very good. Very good. Now, clear your calculator. Plug in 0.0525. Divide by 365 in this case. Press Enter. You got that? Yeah. Plus one, enter. Or equals. You got that? Yeah. Should be 1.00 something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now take it to the 1825th power. So to that, that's the caret button or the XY or the YX. Press 1825. Press enter. It should still be one point something. You still have that? Now take times 25,000. That's what you do last. So you get 32,500 uh, something. 503.80. By a show of hands, if you had a calculator, how many people got that? Good. Now I want you to look at the difference. Look at the board here real quick. Look at the difference in the interest. This interest was calculated only getting interest added once a month. You with me on this? Yes, no? Mm -hmm. Yes. This interest was calculated every single day you got a little tacked on. Every day for, and this is over five years. This is one the, once a month for five years. This is every day for five years. Are they that different? No. Yes. Little. No. No, they're not. 20 bucks. 18 bucks. $18. $19.99. Uh, but that's 17 dollars. Seventeen. Oh, yeah, 17 dollars. Is that a lot over the course of five years? No. no. So is, is compounded monthly versus daily all that important? No. Well, you've got to be to the penny accurate, sure. But it's not going to make that much of a difference. What does make a huge difference in interest is two things. First, of course, the number of years. The number of years you have your loan for is a big deal. That's why when they say, well, we can lower your monthly payments, we'll just make it last two more years. You are going to end up paying a true. Because I'll warn you right now. At a car dealership, you're going to walk in the door. If you never bought a new car, they're going to get you. You're going to walk in the door, they're going to go, how much do you want to spend a month? And yeah. you're, going to, you're going to go, 200 bucks a month. And they're going to go, we can make that happen. They're just going to finance your $20,000 car over like eight years. You'll be paying for that car for eight years. It'll still be $200 a month, which is going to sound good to you. But over the long haul, you're going to be spending way, way more than what that car is worth. Do you get the idea? So that's how they, they would get you there. The number of years is huge. The second thing, most important thing, is the interest rate. If you jack up the interest rate, you pay a lot more over the course of how, whatever length of time you're, you're going to spend. So interest rate, number of years. Okay, that's the two things that really affect it. The compounds, that it's, it's really not hurting you or helping you all that much. It's the interest rate and the number of years. Feel okay with the interest stuff? So you definitely need to know how to use your calculator, don't you? You're going to have problems like this on your test. Make sure you're able to do that. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about today, this is where we, we kind of end talking about real life stuff. This is the chapter that's going to help you in Math A and Math C. You're going to want to know this stuff. You're going to have a big leg up in Math A and Math C if you learn this stuff well. So we're going to, we're going to skip chapter 8 and 9. We're going to go to chapter 10. Do they ever, uh, if it's daily, do they ever worry about leap years? They, 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 they usually, let that day slide. They do uh, 364 and a quarter day, 365 and a quarter days, usually. 